Hello, welcome to the Monday, June 19th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm reporting from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Lorna noticed on Friday an uptick in port 83 scans. Now, there isn't any obvious service assigned to port 83. We set up some honeypots on port 83 and really got a variety of different packets. Some TCP packets that after a complete handshake, we get something in binary, not obviously matching a particular protocol. Some HTTP over UDP and then also some of the universal plug and play. Now universal plug and play does look like HTTP but when I say HTTP traffic over UDP that actually was not uh, universal plug and play. Instead it uh, did look exactly like what you would expect for HTTP. Now a couple options here. The quick protocol that Google is using it uses UDP and essentially does HTTP over UDP, but it has its own special structure. So this does not look like quick. Now, according to Shodan, the most common server found on port 83 happens to be HTTP. And well, it makes a lot of sense that 83 is used as an alternative port for 80. The next in the list is FTP. Not sure why people run FTP on port 83, but uh, sure, why not? So if you got any insight, uh, please share it with us. Uh, there are samples in Lorna's diary about uh, the traffic that she saw on port 83. And last week, Fortinet did release details about a denial of service vulnerability in the Wins service after Microsoft stated that they will not fix this vulnerability. All you have to do is establish three replication sessions with a Wins server and it will essentially hang. Now, the problem, of course, with Wins is that Microsoft has clearly labeled it as a legacy service. You shouldn't really be running wins. It was a leftover from the good old Windows for workgroup days. So uh, nothing that any modern network really should rely on. On the same note, Microsoft also announced that later this year, they will release a patch that will turn off SMB version one. So what you probably should do if you haven't done that already, turn off oh, SMB one unless you know that you have any dependencies that you need to clean up. But if you turn it off now, it will be easier to turn it on again in case there are some yet to be discovered dependencies on SMB1. Now, apparently the decision to release this update is not an effect of a WannaCry. Instead, uh, that plan was hatched originally five years ago, according to a statement from Microsoft. And a British hacker admitted to stealing a number of email addresses and phone numbers for US military satellite systems. So these phone numbers, about 40,000 of them were satellite phone numbers. He also stole email addresses for users of that satellite network. Now, some news outlets made it sound like he actually penetrated this military satellite network. I don't think that's true and uh, if you read the document it I believe what he really did was uh, more come across some public documents on some websites that were probably not properly secured. And Sophos released an update for its web appliances that will now force these appliances to update via HTTPS. In the past, they have done this via HTTP, which of course uh, shouldn't really happen. Now, there is a small problem with the switch to HTTPS, and that's if these appliances are behind proxies. A lot of enterprises use, use proxies that intercept HTTPS traffic. Now, they're signing certificates then with their own internal certificate authority 
priority. However, Sophos, as part of the switch to HTTPS, actually implemented certificate pinning, which is something that they should implement. So that's a good thing. But with that, these certificates signed by the proxy will be rejected. So you have to make sure that you enable the respective exemptions for your Sophos web appliances. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.